Welcome back here on live now from Fox. The time 132 on the East Coast and 1032 on the West Coast. My name is Josh Breslow and I'm here to bring you all of your top stories from across the country and across the world. And this one has been a big one. Carly Russell, the Alabama woman accused of faking her own kidnapping, has bonded out of jail following her arrest. Russell turned herself into the jail Friday on charges of false reporting to law enforcement and falsely reporting an incident. Earlier this month, Hoover police say she called 911 to report a toddler wandering on the interstate and was missing for about 48 hours before returning home. Earlier this week, officers say she admitted through her attorney that there was no kidnapping and there was never a wandering toddler. I want to talk more about the case here. Nima Romani, a friend of the show, is a former federal prosecutor and joins us now live. As always, Nima, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for having me. So as you've watched this case play out over the last several weeks, are you surprised? What are your thoughts knowing that these two misdemeanor charges have now been filed against Carly Russell? Josh, I'm not surprised. I mean, Carly's story did not make sense, didn't check out. I mean, there were so many inconsistencies, so it was clear that she was lying. So it was just a question of when she was going to get charged, not if. So I'm not surprised that the charges happened as quickly as they did. And tell me about the severity of these two charges. As we've mentioned, they are considered to be misdemeanors, but it sounds like she could actually serve some jail time. Josh, I think she probably will do some jail time. You know, unfortunately, under Alabama law, these types of offenses, they are not felonies. So it's really state specific or on the federal side, making a false statement is indeed a felony. It's actually punishable by up to five years in federal prison. But in Alabama, these are just misdemeanors. So the maximum sentence she can get would be one year on each count. I don't think she's going to get the max, but I fully expect her to get some jail time. Was there ever really an option as to whether to file charges or when you're talking about a high profile case like this that essentially received national attention, do police essentially have to file charges? I think so, Josh, and every prosecutor in this country, they're either elected or appointed by someone who is. So if you don't file charges in a case like this, that's how you get booted out of office. I mean, there's so much time and money that was spent searching for Carly and it was all a hoax. So. I'm not surprised that prosecutors decided to file. And Carly Russell did turn herself into the jail yesterday. She quickly bonded out uh, after being charged with those two misdemeanor counts. Is that fairly standard procedure when you're talking about a case like this? It really is. When you're talking about misdemeanors, bond is appropriate. Here's someone that uh, clearly is not a risk of flight because she faked her own kidnapping. Probably not a danger to the community. Those are the two standards that judges look to to decide whether bond is appropriate as well as the severity of the charges then because they're not very serious they're misdemeanors i'm not surprised that she bonded out so quickly and what are your thoughts on carly not meeting with hoover police directly when she was asked to come back for a follow-up interview after they had questions about her original story instead releasing a statement through her attorney that said the kidnapping itself had been faked well, I'm not surprised. Once you have a lawyer, your lawyer is going to advise you not to speak to the police. I mean, that's, you know, throwing good money after bad. She may have doubled down on her lies, may have subjected herself to further criminal liability. So she wanted to cut her losses. She did come out with a statement admitting that it was all a lie. But meeting with police officers would have probably been a bad idea when you have a lawyer. And I want to get your legal opinion on the Hoover police chief. During the news conference, he said that he's going to talk with lawmakers about eventually allowing this to be a felony rather than a misdemeanor. Is that something that can actually be accomplished? Could it be done? I think you mentioned a short time ago that it's kind of state by state. It can be done, Josh. It's really up to the Alabama state legislature. They do change the law, send it to the governor's office. It'll become a bill just like any other law. But it can't be applied retroactively to Carly Russell. That would be a violation of the Constitution. That would actually be called an ex post facto law. So laws can be applied prospectively going forward, but not retroactively. And a big question I wanted to ask you is, can anything, I mean, at this point, what is left to prove? Because it sounds like she's basically admitted to everything through her attorney. Is there anything left to prove in the case? Or is she essentially guilty of these crimes? 
She is guilty, Josh, and I fully expect her to plead guilty. The question is, does she plead in connection with some sort of plea agreement, or is she just going to plead open and have the judge decide what the appropriate sentence is? But this is not the type of case that can go to trial. I mean, the evidence is overwhelming that the statements that she made, that 911 call, there was no toddler, there was no man with orange hair, she wasn't abducted, she didn't have to get undressed, and all the things that she told law enforcement were untrue. So this is not the type of case that you can try if you're Carly Russell or her attorney. Does it make it tougher for everyone involved in the case, whether you're talking about Carly Russell, elected officials, the attorneys, when you do have so many eyes across the country that are paying such close attention? Because this case essentially went viral as folks were sharing her photo, they were looking for her, and now you have all the outrage from those people. So is it harder to work a case like this and maybe work out a plea deal when everyone knows about it? There's no question. There's gonna be a lot of pressure on these prosecutors to throw the book at Carly Russell. I mean, you know, it's not just jail time. I mean, she should have to reimburse as part of criminal restitution the time and money that law enforcement spent working on the case. And you know, from a, a prosecutor's perspective, Josh, the worst thing you can do is prosecute an innocent person. So these types of false reports not only take time away from law enforcement who could be investigating real crimes and real women. I mean, there's there's thousands and thousands of women in this country that are missing they've been kidnapped they've been sex trafficked and you know when you have law enforcement wasting their time on a hoax like carly russell and for what reason right she wanted attention maybe she was upset at her boyfriend i don't know what the reason was for all this but this wasn't someone who wanted to just dis disappear off the face of the earth this wasn't a gone girl situation this is someone that wanted to be found and wanted the amber alert and wanted the attention so it's pretty shameful what she did i'm glad she finally accepted responsibility unlike someone like uh, Jesse Smollett who pushed the case to trial. But still, uh, it's pretty disappointing that this was a use of government resources. So I fully expect them to prosecute this case pretty aggressively. And it's really just a matter of mitigation for Carly Russell and her lawyer at this point. And you've seen a lot of cases, and I mean a lot of them in your time here. So taking a look at this mugshot, the fact that she's smiling, that's what stands out to a lot of people, and that's what we've seen posted all over social media. Is it something that is so common when you have somebody who is under national scrutiny at this point to be smiling in their booking photo? It's not, and defense lawyers tell their clients, don't smile, jurors don't like it, you're not taking this seriously. I mean, here's someone that, again, probably uh, enjoyed the attention. I think she'll ultimately be coming around and realize that this was a huge mistake, but uh, Carly Russell, at that moment, she took that mugshot, clearly was not there yet. All right, my last question for you here. What's next in this case? What is the next step, and really, what happens next? The next step is going to be a guilty plea, Josh, pursuant to a plea agreement or an open plea where the judge is going to decide the sentence because it's not the type of case that you can push to, you know, a pretrial or file motions. There's no legal defense, much less a factual defense. This is the type of case that if you push the case to a jury trial, you're going to get convicted pretty quickly and slammed at sentencing. All right, Nima Romani, former federal prosecutor, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Anything else you want to add about the case before I let you go? You know, what I would say is this is something we're seeing a lot more because of social media. You know, years ago, uh, people were unable to get this type of attention, right? But now with social media, as soon as someone goes missing, you said it, I mean, these cases go viral. So think of all the things people do just to get likes and comments, you know, but if you get something like this, and it's really uh, just a bigger problem with, with our society, the, the things that people do for attention. All right, Nima Romani, thank you again for taking the time to be here. I appreciate it. Thanks, Josh.